The South Georgia Film Festival is one of the biggest events in Valdosta. The festival happens the first weekend of March, and this year will mark the festival's sixth year. The event will be hosted on the Valdosta State University campus and is open to all members of the community. Here with me today, I have Jason Brown, the festival's director and professor at VSU, who is going to share some details on the festival and what the event will look like. Hi. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. We're really excited. This, uh, this is our sixth year, uh, which uh, is a mark that a lot of festivals and events don't necessarily pass. So we're really excited to, to still be here, to have survived through COVID and ready to present this big event for the community. Okay, so tell me a little bit about how the event is gonna run. So uh, starting on March 3rd, we have a kickoff event at the, the Turner Center for the Arts in downtown Valdosta. We have a preview of what all is going to happen and we actually this year we're working with some local filmmakers who did a documentary about the south side of Valdosta and the development of that part of the community. So we're going to do a work in progress screening with them. And then beginning Friday, March 4th, screenings will be uh, available all across uh, the student union. Um, and then that evening we're going to uh, finish things off with our kickoff party at Georgia Beer. One of the things that, that we really are proud, pride ourselves is how much we're trying to work with the community. And Georgia Beer has been an incredible partner throughout the time that we've existed. Uh, we thank them for all that they've done. And for that reason, we try to throw a great big party for everyone to come out and be a part of. And then Saturday, we have uh, screenings and panels with filmmakers uh, all day long. Uh, and then that evening, we're going to have the South Georgia premiere of Bruce Willis's film, American Siege. It was shot in Fitzgerald. Uh, he, he did about five of them. This is the most recent one, and we're going to be able to premiere it here in Valdosta. Uh, and then that night, we're going to do a screening out on the lawn of the College of the Arts, uh, the film Coda, which is about a uh, young girl who, uh, she's a child of deaf adults, uh, and she wants to become a singer. Um, and we're going to do that out on the lawn like we did last year, uh, so we're really excited with that. And then Sunday, we're going to bring everything together. We're going to have an awards event at noon, and then we have uh, our, our, one of our last films, Bren Gets a Life, uh, and our family-friendly block to finish out Sunday. So we're really excited. It's going to be a, a weekend full of great things for everybody. Okay. So tell me, I know this is the sixth year of the festival. Can you tell me how the festival actually began? Sure. Uh, Coming to Valdosta, uh, film festivals were something that, that I have a, a history with and something that I feel very passionate about. So it was one of the things that, that I wanted to do when I got here. Um, and we started the very first festival. We actually brought a filmmaker from um, Amsterdam who had made a film about a uh, soldier from Valdosta who had died um, and her family actually took care of his grave in uh, Amsterdam her in and uh, you know she got to meet with the family of the soldier uh, we screened the film for the community and it was a really great way to, to kick things off um, and every year we've gotten bigger in some way uh, last year with COVID while um, uh, we didn't have as many films actually we kind of did um, but we just did them virtually or we were able to do some outdoors so we we adjusted and um, and this year along with doing going back to being in person we're continuing that virtual component where people will be able to watch things from, from their home if they want to, as well as that Saturday night uh, outdoor event, which people really enjoyed. Okay, so how long does an event like this take to plan? When do you usually start? Um, we're thinking about next year, yesterday. Uh, these, these things do tend to take a year. Uh, the very first festival uh, you know, took about uh, six months and just sort of things falling together. Um, and I know this year, you know, we've been planning for everything to be normal again. Um, but with everything that's going on, we've had to adjust and, and hope and sort of, you know, move with, with what all is going on. Um, we're trying to be in, we're going to be in person, uh, but we're trying to be as safe as possible. We're still encouraging people to mask up if that's what would help them. Uh, we're going to try to, to encourage distancing. We're going to uh, close off some rows so that people will have some distance between them and other people that are at the screenings. Um, and just try to make this as safe as possible. Uh, last year, while we were outdoors, a lot of the filmmakers, we had, we had a dozen filmmakers come from out of town last year, and they talked about how we were able to put together a really fun, exciting, and safe event. Um, and we, we continue to want to do that. What, what we try to do is to celebrate film, both artistically, you know, something that's fun that everybody can enjoy, but also to think about it as an industry. 
Uh, Georgia has grown in the film industry so much just in the time that I've been here in Valdosta State, and it continues to grow. And one of the things that we really have sort of invested in is trying to show how that that can help at the local level. Uh, two of the people who have been a big part of our festival the last six years are Molly Coffey and Melissa Simpson, and they run a group called Film Impact Georgia, which really is about uh, investing in local people making stuff. Um, you know, I think there's some people who, who aren't happy with the film industry, um, and that's because of their own ideas of what that means and what the Hollywood and everything. Um, but I think my experience is if you get out and meet people who are doing this, you realize that they're just regular people like everybody else. Um, and so we've been really excited to have them come to Valdosta and, and talk about how local communities can get involved in the film industry and what that can mean. Um, you know, we're excited about the Bruce Willis movie because, again, that was something that was shot in Fitzgerald, just north of us. Um, and, you know, that's, that's an industry. They are making those movies and, you know, they're, they're giving people jobs and people are working those things. It's not just Bruce Willis is a big pretty face. I'm, I'm not sure he is a pretty face, but whatever. Uh, but he's exciting and people know him and that's great. But what, what's really great are all the people who got jobs working on those films. So as the event is located in Valdosta, are there any local partnerships, sponsorship between the film festival and the city itself? We work so hard to partner with the community because there's a lot that the community can bring to us. Uh, I mentioned the Turner Center for the Arts. The, that is a great partnership that we, we love to have. Um, and you know, we worked with um, Georgia Beer, which we talked about already. Uh, Georgia Power has been a longtime sponsor for us. Uh, a new sponsor this year that we're really excited about is the South Georgia Studios and Film Academy, which is located in Brooks County. Um, and they're, they're building a studio over there to bring more productions to our community. Uh, along with that, you know, we have uh, Wild Adventures, uh, the Valdosta Lounge Development Authority, um, uh, Radio 92.1. Um, there's so many, and I, I apologize for everyone that I'm forgetting off the top of my head right now. Um, but our partnerships with the community is what really makes us um, stand out. Uh, the biggest thing that's come to us this year, uh, the Valdosta Lounge Tourism Authority has been tremendous. Uh, and they've actually, they actually designed our uh, logo for this year, which is the two and the peach and the two, two for 2022. Uh, and they are helping design the billboards that people will be seeing uh, across town on the digital billboards. Um, so we really think everything that uh, the Valdosta Lounge uh, Tourism Authority is doing for us. Um, but that's what we wanna do. We wanna be able to bring uh, these people from out of town and we want to let the community be able to, to show how they want to support that as well and all these things are working together so well. So I know you get support from the businesses of the community. Do you get a lot of student filmmakers from the local high school and the VSU community? Well one of the, the first things is you know I, I myself and Professor Black uh, you know we work really hard on this but we also are, are really dependent upon the student organization uh, and this year, uh, our president, uh, Ethan Mitchell, has done a great job of organizing students to be able to screen the films that come in to help us determine what actually gets into the festival. And then those students actually, you know, they run the event. You're going to see them uh, scanning people's passes, uh, helping seat people, selling shirts, that kind of stuff throughout the weekend. Um, and we really, you know, we're dependent upon that. Um, but we also want to see you know, those local high schools like you're talking about be able to come to Valdosta and see what's possible. Uh, this year we're really excited. Uh, Brooks County High School and Middle Schools are going to send a large group of students and we're going to be able to give them a tour of the facilities and everything. Um, we're really excited about that and, and every year you never really know exactly who all is going to show up but we, we consistently have been having students come not just from Lowndes and from Valdosta but from high schools all across the region and we want to continue to encourage that. Students, both high school and college, and I guess below that as well, are free to, for all the screenings and the panels. Uh, they just need to show up, show us their ID, uh, and they can get in. Um, we really want to encourage that. So all students are encouraged to, to show up, uh, and we really like the ones that have been participating. So what advice would you give to anybody who wants to enter a film into the festival, but is a little hesitant about it? Well, first off, um, don't be hesitant. Uh, take a shot and see what happens. Uh, this past week, uh, Sundance just finished up, uh, and they had 10,000 entrants just in the feature film categories. That's not the short films or any of the other stuff. Uh, they received so many entries, uh, and while there's plenty of ways that can go, you, you really don't know what, what separates you from everybody else until you sort of see that. So please don't be worried. Put your stuff out there. 
But the biggest thing that I would encourage you to do is think about who's going to watch your stuff. Who, who do you want to see watch your stuff? Um, you know, we're showing the film Coda and we're partnering with the ASL English Interpreters Program here on campus. Um, and, you know, a big part of that is to sort of uh, let people see a film that represents that community and that they're a part of. Um, and if you're making a film, think about that. Who, who are you making this for? Who, who, who do you want to see this? Um, you know, if it's your mom, great, you don't need us. Go, go do something else. Um, but if it's more than that, then really you want to think about who, those, who that community is. Um, and, you know, the people who go to come to see our stuff aren't that much different from the people who go to uh, Georgia Theatre Company to see movies on Friday night. Um, but we're a little bit different. Uh, and what I mean by that is generally these are people who really enjoy film and, um, you know, you're not just expecting explosions or anything else, you're expecting something a little bit richer. Um, so think about that. There's a lot of festivals out in the world. Um, there are dozens upon dozens in Atlanta alone that feature films for just for black filmmakers, just for horror fans, just for, um, uh, I believe, I think in October is uh, the Outfest, which is a lesbian, gay, LGBTQ festival. Uh, there's plenty of them. And if you think about your, what you're working on and you just want to find an audience, um, think about who you want to get to. But if you don't know, just put it out there and then see how people react. That's all you can ever do. Okay, so I know that we have a long list of events available that weekend. Mm -hmm. Where can people go to find a schedule of events or what we'll be showing during the week? That's a great question. I, I encourage everybody to go to southgeorgiafilm.com. That's our main website. Uh, and you can click the button for, for tickets from there. Uh, and we'll have the schedule and the links to uh, buying tickets. Uh, if you want to go directly to that, though, it's sgff 22 dot eventive dot org so that both of those links will get you to where you need to be tickets for forty dollars will get you the all-day pass correct and it'll get you everything for the whole weekend uh, fifteen dollars gets you uh, all the screenings and the panels for any day uh, but if you want to just again you want to stay at home you can watch any movie for five dollars um, now we have VIP festival things and students all students if you show up with your ID you can get into any screening or any panel with your ID. Uh, but if you want to, as a student, want to go to the parties, it's $25 instead of the $40. Uh, we have options for everybody. There's, there's no reason that somebody uh, would come to the festival and have nothing that they can't be a part of. And we think these are you know, pretty reasonable prices. Thank you, Professor Brown. It looks like the event is shaping up to be a really fun one. Thank you for coming and talking to us, and we can't wait for the event to happen. Thank you.